Time for the following telecast has been paid for by G.C. Plemons, Chairman, on behalf of James M. Hayes, Jr., candidate for the Democratic nomination for State Senator from Forsyth County. Now, here is Mr. James M. Hayes, Jr. The year 1960 is a time for politicians to expose themselves to the scrutiny of the public. Those of us who find ourselves in the midst of the electorate seeking votes share a common hazard. We're expected to strut, to preen, to advertise our personality and charm. We're expected to entertain. We're expected to tell you jokes and otherwise avoid getting down to facts because facts lead to issues and issues can be dangerous. I want it to be understood that in this respect, I am not a politician. I am not in a personality contest. I am not going to enter a personality contest. Instead, I am in a political contest, and I promise it will be one of the most intensive that county has ever seen. Political campaigns are supposed to be governed by certain rules, and every eager candidate is supposed to conform to those rules. It's like gardening in the spring. After the snows melt and the ground is right, the plow is put to the soil, the hoe to the furrow. Then the good gardener carefully scatters fertilizer into the loamy soil because he knows that without it, his plants just won't get the first base. And that which gives his plants the vital impetus in the botanical process is similar, in effect, to campaign speeches in a political contest. Ordinarily, and according to the rules, the campaign speeches come toward the last, and I am shattering the nerves of some of the, of the precedent-worshipping people of this community by scheduling this campaign speech at this early date before the plowing, the hoeing, and the handshaking have hardly gotten underway. Precedent calls for flattery in soliciting votes. This precedent I aim to violate. I'm not going to try to flatter anybody into voting for me. I am going to ask you for advice. I am going to listen to your problems. And if you elect me, I will champion your rights on the floor of the state senate in the face of any foe or combination of foes. Voters are assumed to be too indifferent to want to know or to understand the issues of government. It is therefore no loss and considerable gain for the precedent-seeking candidate to wait to the last minute to declare before his electorate where he stands. I want it to be understood now where I stand and what I stand for. For more than two decades, Forsyth County's selection or choice of a state senator has been a matter of selection rather than election. This is the main precedent I aim to break. Government by minority is government by default. It is essential, it is contrary to the essential idea of democracy. For more than 20 years, Forsyth County people have submitted quietly to the wishes of a self-centered group of self-styled aristocrats. They have yielded up their representation in the state senate to sophisticated interests that hold small concern for the people's needs and desires. And this sorry state of affairs has also become a precedent. That it shall be broken is no longer a question. I have already shattered this precedent, for whoever wins this contest will have to earn its victory through the majority wishes of the people. And why have the needs and desires of so many of us been denied by so few for all of these years? I will tell you why, and the answer is going to hurt. It is because of our own apathy and indifference. As to the office of state senator, we have allowed ourselves to be dominated. Domination in this community is figuratively a twin-headed monster 
consisting of social snobbery and political snobbery. As to the first of those heads, we cannot do anything. But as to the second, it's going to have to roll because American citizens oppose being controlled. In certain situations, we have to live with domination, but we do not have to like it. Thousands of our men tasted the harsh sting of domination in the military service. Most of them got out as fast as they could, patriotically. Now, this county is no military establishment, and there will be no more political domination and political snobbery within its borders. Because this is the issue of this campaign, political domination, and I am against it. I am asking every citizen of this city and county to step up, join ranks, sound off, and fight by my side in this battle. The business of a privileged few Dominating the social life of this community is none of our business and none of our battle, but that which is a part of both is the sacred right of self-determination in the field of government, a proposition to which millions of American lives have been dedicated. And why? In order that we might enjoy the privilege of the ballot box. When I speak of a privileged few, I'm speaking of good men. I'm speaking of men as benevolent to good causes as any comparable group of men on earth. But benevolence is one thing, and politics is another. It's like church and state. There are those of us who believe that they ought to be separated. Now, when people conclude that they know better what is good for us than we know ourselves, then that's throwing democracy out the window. When we allow others to think for ourselves, then we, not they, suffer the consequences. As we search our conscience about our obligations as citizens and what we have done to discharge, discharge those obligations, we all deserve to feel a sense of shame. I confess that I myself was indifferent, as indifferent to political domination in this county as anyone else until along about last fall, when for the sake of progress, 11,000 adult citizens of this community faced the undemocratic specter of having their right to vote taken away from them on a proposition of their own taxes. It was then that hearts began to pound with the firm conviction that that was not right. And with that conviction, their battle flag, they marched into the city where they had no vote and performed a political miracle. It was then that people began to ask themselves, where did that law come from? In answer to that question, other questions arose until it began to include not just the subject of an annexation, but it began to include the subject of teachers, of state employees, of public education, of old people, the handicapped, the totally disabled, a double year's income tax sting and last but not least, the laboring man and woman. And when the answers were total, it was thought to be both necessary and important that this political contest take place. That is to date the history of a newborn movement of community concern in this county. And here are the issues. On April 10, 1959, at a countywide parent-teachers conference at Mineral Springs School, Senator Davis said, quote, on balance, it is my judgment that North Carolina is doing all it could reasonably be expected to do in the field of public education, end quote. He then went to Raleigh and voted against the teachers and state employees. I would have voted for them. Senator Davis and his colleagues voted to cut the miserable pittance that the old people and the totally disabled, disabled received, thereby partially shutting off federal fun funds. I I consider that a shameful thing. And the misery and suffering that that has caused shall be a political millstone that he must wear around his neck throughout this campaign. Senator Davis voted against the laboring man and woman. 
one of only six in the conservative state Senate to say that 75 cents per hour is too much to guarantee the labor. I consider that an insult to every employee of every industry of this industrial county. And that which makes the insult so aggravatingly gratuitous is the fact that every industry in this county pays considerably more than that amount. And if the laboring man and his family had to live on the amount that Senator Davis said was too much to guarantee they would literally starve to death, North Carolina is already 49th lowest in the United States in per capita income. Would Senator Davis make it the 50th? For whom or what was he voting then? Was he representing the people? Certainly not. Back in 1947, when I was in the General Assembly, I did my best to represent the needs and aspirations of the average citizen. I'm not going to stand here and boast about my record because boasting strikes a discordant note to the human ear. But if anyone wants to attack my record, I'm going to see if some more time can become available on this same media for the purpose of proving to this audience that I did represent the needs and aspirations of the average citizen. Since I have had the temerity to buck political precedent in this county, I've been accused of everything from a left-winger to a Republican. The businessman knows I'm no left-winger, and as to the charge of being Republican, I wish to state that one of my supporters, Mr. G.C. Plemons, one night took 18 people to be registered, six of whom were lifelong Republicans who changed their party affiliation in order that they might vote for me. The conversion of a Republican, I submit, is the most rewarding evidence of political loyalty. Bear in mind, the real reason for these labels is that I am bucking the historic appointed system in this county and those who wish to keep on pulling the strings are mortally afraid they're losing their control. There are people of this state and nation who accuse us of being a provincial, mill village type of people or worse, a herd of sheep that wander meekly in the direction we're told to go. I say we're not sheep. I say we're no mill village. We are instead a progressive and growing community of proud and effective citizens. You will show the strength and importance of Forsyth County when you return the office of state senate to the people. The poet Sam Walter Falls gave me a plank to my political platform when he said, there are hermit souls that live withdrawn in the place of their self-content. There are souls like stars that dwell apart in a fellowless firmament. There are pioneer souls that blaze their paths where highways never ran. But let me live by the side of the road and be a friend to man. You've been listening to Mr. James M. Hayes, Jr., Time for this telecast was paid for by G.C. Plemons, chairman, in behalf of James M. Hayes, Jr., candidate for the Democratic nomination for state senator from Forsyth County. <laughs>